So to create a virtual machine in Azure using PowerShell, assuming you don't have anything set up yet already, we're gonna start by creating a resource group. So I got the name of our resource group and giving it a location using the new Azure ARM resource group commandlet. And you notice for the rest of the demo, I'm using the same location, keeping everything in one spot. And so the next thing we need to create is a subnet. And to do that, we use the new Azure RM virtual network subnet config commandlet and give that subnet a name and a prefix inside our notation. And then I'm going to store that in the subnet variable so that I can use the new Azure RM virtual network command to create a new network with that subnet in it. So you notice that my network here, I've got a name, got it the same resource group, same location, and the address prefix inside our notation again encompasses that subnet. So that subnet falls within uh, the network specified by my network address prefix here. So I'll go ahead and create that virtual network. And the next thing we're going to create is the storage account to store everything in. And for my storage account, you notice here I've got the name and it's gotta be global unique, all lowercase and numbers, specifying the same resource group, uh, giving it the SKU name. So this is the type of storage she used. And in my case, I'm just sticking with the standard local redundant storage. That's what LRS stands for. Uh, there are some premium and other redundancy options, but we're keeping it simple. Same location. And then we'll use the new Azure ARM storage account commandlet uh, to create that. And I'm also storing that in the storage account variable. And you'll see why here in just a minute. So the next thing we want to create here for this virtual machine is its public IP so we can access it from the internet. So here I'm giving it a name, specifying the resource group, so the same one as before. Allocation methods, this is dynamic or static. Dynamic's cheaper, this is just a demo, so that's, that's going to work great. Domain name level, so this you got a domain you're going to be using, but you know, again, this is demo, so we're just using test domain. And specifying the location, same location for me again. And I'm going to be using the new Azure RM public IP address. And you notice I'm also storing this one in the public IP variable as well. So for a lot of these, you notice that I'm storing them in variables and that's so we can use them further on. And here's a great example of why. So uh, to create the Azure RM network interface, so you notice I've got some parameters here. So the name, of course, the resource group from before, location, but I'm also putting it in a subnet. So here in the command, you notice I've got the subnet ID and I'm specifying the first subnet out of the virtual network we made before and the ID of that one as well as the public IP address ID. So I've got the public IP, but I'm specifying the ID property. And that way, I don't have to remember what those IDs were and copy paste them. We just specify the variables that we stored them in. And so the next thing we need to make is the virtual machine config. And to do that, we use the new Azure RM VM config commandlet. And you, you can see that I'm giving it, it's a really simple name, specifying a pretty standard size, nothing too drastic here. So go ahead and, and create that config. And then to actually create the operating system here, we use the set Azure RM VM operating system. And we've got some parameters. I'm specifying Windows to true, because I want to install Windows on it. Computer name, this is the name, the host name of the computer, just calling it my VM. Uh, it's going to ask me for some credentials because I'm using the get credential commandment here. And this will be the name and password of the local admin account. And I'm setting the provision VM agent to true so that it installs the agent on it and enabling auto updates. All right. so. We'll go ahead and put in the user here. Give it a password. All right, and you notice I assigned this one to the VM variable as well. So then we need to create a source image as well for our virtual machine. So for the source image, you can see I'm using the Microsoft Windows Server as a publisher, selecting the latest version, and then the SKU is just 2012 R2 data center. So I'm not, I decided just to go to 2012 R2 instead of 2016 just personal preference in this case. So I'm going to assign this all to the new source image params variable. So another thing we need is we need to know what the location that we're using offers. And so we can use the get Azure RM VM image offer commandlet to take a look. And so if we look at the offer variable here, you can see we've got the all three of these options. And we're going to use that inside of the set Azure RM VM source image commandlet. And you can see here, I'm passing the source image params from before, as well as the VM. So I'm assigning using the VM variable and then using that offer that I just grabbed. And I'm assigning this to the VM variable so that it updates it. So then the next thing we'll need to do is to add that network interface to our VM. And so you can see here that I'm specifying the VM with the VM variable, as well as the ID of the VNIC by specifying the VNIC variables ID property. 
And I also keep assigning this back to that VM variable so it keeps updating all the different settings that I'm changing. And so the last thing we want to do is to create the disk. And then once we have the disk, we can create that VM, assign the OS, and we'll be off to the races. So first of all, I'm going to give this OS disk a name, just calling it my disk. And to create the URI, we have to look at some properties of the storage account. So specifically, the primary endpoints blob dot to string. And so if we look at this, that's what that looks like. So that'll be the start of the URI that we're using for our disk. And I'm also putting it in the VHDs folder with the VM name, the US disk name, and then of course the dot VHD has the suffix on there. So if we assign this to the OS disk URI and then actually look at that variable, uh, you can see that that's where the OS disk is going to be inside of my storage account. And so then to create that disk, we're going to use the set Azure RM VM OS disk. And I'll give it a name as well as the create option. So we're saying it's from an image because we specified the image earlier for our virtual machine. And then we'll run the set Azure RM VM OS disk commandlet with those parameters, specifying our VM as well as that OS disk URI that we just created. And you notice again, I am assigning this back to the VM variable. So we can just keep getting those changes caught up in that variable. So then the last step we have is to create the VM using the new Azure RM VM commandlet. And here is where we specify the VM, our resource group location, and we'll finally get a virtual machine created using all the options that we've specified before. And this may take a couple minutes because it's actually, you know, provisioning and creating the virtual machine. And once your virtual machine has been created, uh, you should get a response code here that says status code is OK, is success status code equal to true. And so then we can verify that, that virtual machine was created using the get Azure RM resource commandlet here on line 81. And you notice here that I'm looking at all the resources in a resource group called my resource group, which is the one we created. And so we've got the VM, uh, we've got the NIC, the IP, the network, and the storage account. They're all inside of that resource group. So now we've got a whole script to do everything we need to create a virtual machine. But the problem is that it's kind of, you got to figure out where to change things if you want to create a new VM. And so what we've done is we've taken this script and we've converted it into a reusable function. So all of the parameters that you need for your script are right here at the top. So I've got my resource group name, my VM name, my host name. We've got everything set here. This is a lot of the same code from before. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if that VM already exists. And if it does, well, we're not going to re recreate it. Script is done. And then here on line 60, we're going to check and see if that resource group already exists. Line 67, if that virtual network already exists. And on down the script, we check to see if something already exists. And if it does, we're going to use that. And if it doesn't, then we're going to create it. And so to use this, I've got this nice big splat here with all the different parameters that I need. So I've got my resource group name, a VM name, my host name, admin credentials. And this is the credentials that will set up on the VM. I've got my network. I've got everything. We've, I mean, we've already covered all of this before. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And you notice that I'm specifying the verbose flag. And that's what's going to give me some additional output. And I specify the username and password that the VM is going to use. And it's going to start creating it. So you can see here's some verbose output. And this will, of course, take a while to run. I mean, you remember before the just running the virtual machine took a while. And each step along the process also uh, took a bit of time. But doing it all as a function, it's not waiting for each step for us to run it. It's running it all itself. All right, you see that we got the same output that we got from before from running the new Azure RM VM. So let's check and see if that stuff was all created. We're going to again use the get Azure RM resource commandlet, specify the name of the resource group we just created, piping it to format table. And there we go. We can see that we've got our virtual machine, network interface, the IP address, as well as the storage account. Thanks for watching.